There we go. Still the VC play. Thank you for telling me. I would have forgotten. Load. This is, this is the most one. Oh, this is outright says, you know, the rogues are the most highly damaging class in the game. It's not possible. But, ah. Sure. That was a bit loud. Yes. Oh, for fuck's sake. I changed it and then it changed it back. Well, at the very least, it stopped um, recommending me call to power. No, I accidentally whacked my DPI up. 100. So there we go. That's the right one. Should be changed now. Feel Felion. Ah! As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. Mine. You see a pennant waving tall and sluggish in the wind, a rising sun embroidered on the banner, the vanguard of a small troop of paladins. The atmosphere is buoyant, if restrained, and their armor has not yet been tarnished by the elements. This expedition is fresh, young, filled with zest and zeal. At the head stands a commander, awkward in full armor but determined in step. Despite the excitement of his fellows, he does not smile. There's a twist to his mouth, his countenance game, grim. He throws up a hand, halting his troop. Silence falls among them, revealing a dark thunder, deep and low. He orders them to ready their weapons and spread out. Eyes dart from horizon to horizon, necks twisting to see the source of the sound. In the distance, dust and lightning rise from the ground as Stygian clouds race, to race towards them overhead. The soldiers stand, only staccato moving to their breath, betraying their nerves. The commander closes his eyes, calls a blessing down on the troop. Invigorated, invincible, they waste the enemy draws closer, poised to attack. Well, that's the same thing. Beneath the binds of a crude carving of a sun rising over three stars. Ah, oh, hence to go chew on leftover stuff, and you can chew on me. Or ride, or both. There's always an option. Rising Sun 3 um, Dawn Stars, the symbol of Aethos. Please help me here. The leftover um, bifteki from the Greek um, palace where we were at, uh, the Greek girl my past my parents had. Ooh, a man lies resting against the wall, light lit by the dim illumination of the fading sconces. He has a gaunt, fox like appearance, and is pale as face and damp with sweat. One arm is held loosely against his side, sleeve soaked with blood. He gives you an anxious glance at you near, his features twisted with pain. Well met, friend. Ah, thought you were some... Never mind, whoever you are, you've travelled a long way to reach a dark place. This temple isn't what it used to be, probably for the best, times being as they are. He groans and shifts position, wincing. I'm no looter, if that's what you're thinking. Not one of the faithful either, just wanted to do some good, I suppose. Got my arm clawed up for it, regards you wearily. Maybe you have better luck. Better luck with what? The man points a finger upwards. These ruins around us used to be a temple of Aethos, a, sa a scattered god, a grand temple at that. His worshippers would come from all over the drywood, from Red Saras over, even... Until the war, of course. Even then, you get some of the stubborn ones. The ones who um, that couldn't get through it with their heads, and the god was dead and gone. Go on. Once the legacy started, Lord Raedric decided he'd be too lenient on the um, Eutheans. He had his people go in and put them to the sword, left them down there, buried under a heap of rock. After that, Raedric ordered the temple sealed. It's been years like that. Up until recently, Lord Raedric hopes that if we um, rededicate the temple to a living god, they will be forgiven, and the legacy will end. See? Smiles wryly. 
But until then, the temple is as you see it, unguarded. That's where you come in. Words and licks his lips. Those priests, maybe they didn't have a lick of sense between them, but they still didn't deserve to go like that. Chop down for their god's house if it doesn't sit right with me. You can get down there, find their remains. Maybe we can finally give them a proper burial. Words and breathes out. No small task. There's coin in it for you if you need motivating. I'll find them. Then by the flame, I owe you a good turn. But listen, the temple's been sealed off for so long it's crawling with creatures. But if you get past them, the priests would have been down on the lower floor. They'll be there still if they're anywhere. Those priests have all kinds of secret chambers. Switches in the walls, tricks, sconces, that kind of thing. Keep an eye out and take care down there. I will now send someone else after your remains. I'll wait here by the stairs and keep a lookout. Maybe try to patch yourself up some. Well... Ivory Spidlings. What the fuck? I thought it was this conversation again as well. Well met, friend. Sure. Will o wisp. Okay, fine. Uh. Two of them. What the fuck? What the fuck even is this? Fuck, I'm leaving then. Sure. Were you looking for someone in that tree? I could introduce you. Look, if anyone can make, help me feel better. He gets on the same noise, he takes a long drag from his pipe. My condolences. He exhales and turns his attention away, watching the village around him. Oh, thanks. Down between the roots and bracelets of tween and bride, wilting flowers, notes half erased by the rains. You see four people gathered by the door to the inn. They raise voices and chopping gestures, so just an argument reaching its climax. First figure raises a hand for calm. His face is partially obscured by a hood, but his height and stature suggest an elf. I meant no offense. Let's put this matter to rest over a round, shall we? My treat. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, eh? We don't need your coin. What's going on? One of the men points to the hooded elf, his eyes are red from drink, but his gaze is focused. Mocking us even while he shelters in our village, just goes to show what his fancy idea of man is worth. We don't take that kind of treatment, not from foreigners, and especially not from Adirans. Go on, say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fie, you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cocksfeather! I'll cut that barrel looking tongue out of your head! This is a misunderstanding. I didn't say whatever it is you think I said. We've nigh quarrel. That's where you're wrong. What? It's unnecessary. Wouldn't you rather be inside drinking out here arguing? When you're a charity, the foreigner. 
Squinty through red bleary eyes. Sounds suspicious it's like you're defending him. Oh, uh, well. Jesus. Well, that's a thing. There's lots of tech for the alternative to you. Attention almost going from a smooth face. Not quite how I hope to get to know the neighbors. Thank you for your timely assistance with that awkward situation. See, that's what I expect from monks. You know, two of them come up, smack, smack. I'm glad I could help. Courtesy is a rare pleasure in these parts. Though your accent suggests that you are no more local than I. He straightens his hood and you note the remains of a fray embroidered in his gloves. His boots are caked with the dirt of many months' travel, but the leather work beneath is sturdy and fine. Well, I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvuser, at your service. Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm a wizard by training, and an adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire, and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. And to go and turn the lights However, on, because there were no he's getting positions in those houses, yeah. and Arkish. So I decided to seek what? new means in a new what? land. See, I can be seen. And how exactly did you come to be here? I was traveling with a caravan. We were separated near some ruins. In Gwythan ruins? Well, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. And half the locals would arrest you for trespassing, and the rest would kill you outright. I'm curious. What exactly did you find there? Several hooded figures operate a strange machine. Elf goggles at you silently, apparently assessing your earnestness. Finally, he gives you a clipped, awkward laugh. You do manage to find yourself in rather interesting predicaments. What are you doing in Gilded Vale? An excellent question. I came looking for fresh air and cheap land. Instead, the magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife. But I take it that's a familiar tale. I've been experiencing strange things of late. I'm looking for an expert on souls. Indeed. The local lord has searched far and wide for similar specialists. And he has rid himself of them almost as desperately. Also, the gnarled old tree in the centre of town. His darting glance states in the tumble down buildings and the fallow rock strewn fields. I expect that such expertise would be best sought elsewhere. How did you manage to cross the three drunks? I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. You did tell that one man to go fuck his sister. Ah, that. Because those injustice leaves. As I tried to tell them, they misheard me. Happens all too easy after a few pints, and the accident doesn't help. I heard the same thing. For a moment, he looks as if he's about to say something else. His expression brightens with mischief, but before he can speak, he forces a tight smile, biting his lips so hard you expect to see blood. Finally, his face relaxes and he shakes his head. I should speak more clearly next time. My apologies. Don't exactly look like a settler. Begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet, circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. Should get going. As should I, given recent events. It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. So do I. Let's get them. Excellent. I shall follow you. Yay! Have a party member. Their bodies are naked. I literally took the clothing from their backs. That's a drama. Moi. Cape. Good.
Hail, traveler. Hello and welcome to the... Oh, it's you. Tenfrith told us what you did for him, so it's actually to have him back. I can't thank you enough. You can see yourself a favourite of the house. Discounts on drinks, rooms. Tenfrith said he wanted to whip up something nice for you. It was a bank who worked in the kitchen, to ask. So what would you like? Um... Let's see what we have to say. Do we find something you like? We have the finest cooking in Deerwood. That's a lot of XP. Hey there. Thanks, we need to level up. With strikes amongst hands become a frenzy blur of attacks, increasing the attack rate for a brief period, requires a wound. Same wheel, a monk is able to channel physical pain to pure energy and redirect as an attackers. While a monk has wounds, he or she adds a proportional fire bonus and melee damage. Ooh. Long stride, intense practice and years of study enable the monk to move with confident fluid in battle. During combat, the monk's movement rate is significantly increased. Force of anguish. Powerful attack that knocks the target back a significant distance if the attack is successful. Target bumps others out of the way and bounces off hard surfaces like walls before ending up prone. Ooh. 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 Swiss, um, turning wheel. Go for that. Add cinnamon vanilla ice cream. Brain, why did you immediately clock that as cinnilla? Ah, it's you, my saviour! He makes a sweeping gesture to indicate the kitchen around you. So good to be back. You don't think you'll let this go unrewarded. I've decided that you have earned my, the right to learn one most closely guarded secret. My dearest recipe. After this, you will eat nothing else. A savoury pie to keep you hale and hearty. May it serve you well in your travels. Thanks. Anything else? I'll name a dish in your honour. <laughs> Not what people usually think when they say they want to eat Chinya, but sure. On bright blade and so, ooh, okay. People. As you near, you feel a vibrant history out containing the essence of this woman's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. Reach out the soul. You see a woman emptying her satchel onto her bed, taking stock of her inventory. Potions, bandages, tinctures and herbs are scattered throughout her room haphazardly. She bites her lip, head tilted to the side, considering. She begins to repack one item after the other, careful deliberation undercut by shaking hands. Each item has a clearly marked place, but no matter how she repacks it, she isn't satisfied. The shaking worsens as she empties it out once more, one hand held to her mouth. Tears eek from her eyes as she gathers all, give her all sense order and shoves everything she can in the satchel, grabbing it and running out of the bay house. Straightening her back, she walks to the docks, chin high, eyes hard on red, a gangly young elf offers his condolences, but she can't see him for the ocean ahead of her. She wanders the docks, offering her services as a doctor who any will listen, anyone heading out on a high tide. Less than an hour later, she watches her childhood disappear in the distance, a tiny speck of an island, she and tries not to jump. Okay. Chin your whole meat suit, guaranteed to make you lem your lips. Ah. You need part of the moment history, okay. Reach out this line, soul. You see a group of young men standing around a makeshift practice target. This man stands in the middle of them, explaining the construction and use of a bow. He holds it up, pointing out each part he speaks about it and what it does. He then walks away from the target, telling them to remain where they are. He takes his place about 200 feet away. He carefully designs up his shot, explaining what he is doing as he does, and lets the arrow fly. It hits the target dead centre, much to the surprise and delight of the boys near it. 
He smiles, walking towards the boys, talking about proper stance and how to most effectively hold a bow. A noise comes from the th tree line near the practice venue, and he stops, scanning the woods, blue eyes squinting against the sun. A shadow moves, making its way through the forest behind them. He draws an arrow and lines up the shot, carefully tracking the motion of the hidden creature. Losing the arrow, he wastes no time and quickly grabs another. The boys spin, watching the arrow fly into the forest, immediately lost among the trees. There is sudden, explosive movement in the undergrowth as a deer erupts from the tree line, running across the edge of the clearing. The boys laugh, turning to joke about with the man with the, about his lousy shot. They stop talking, seeing him holding the bow and leading the deer with a knocked arrow. They drop to the ground as he loses the last arrow, which flies true and strikes the deer behind, right behind its shoulder, piercing its heart and lungs and dropping it dead almost instantly. The boys stare at the deer for a few seconds and then slowly turn to look at the man. Newfound respect in their eyes, he smiles again and breathes a quiet sigh of relief. It's an interesting system. More! You see a man soar through the air, hitting a nearby wall with a nauseating crunch. He doesn't get up. His attacker, a burly clean-cut warrior with a carnivorous grin, turns and shoves his fist into the stomach of another assailant, removing another from the impromptu brawl. The bar is a whirlwind of elbows, knees, fists and feet with no end in sight, and he is in his element. In the corner, three small men speak quietly, throwing malicious glances at the larger man in the centre. He breaks a chair over a tattooed head, cackling. The trio position themselves in three parts of the room. With a terse nod, they charge. Unfortunately for them, the man sees them coming. Something in his eyes burns brightly, and all three slump to the ground in agony. That's all in their, that's all in their minds. The burly man bows to a room of unconscious incapacitated before sauntering out, off-key whistling training behind him. See an emaciated boy in chains, black holes for eyes, staring sightlessly at a wall. A man in a dark coat walks in, a scroll and oddly shaped quill in his hand. The boy glances at him expressionless, a corpse waiting for animation. The man clucks at him, disapproval clear in his tone. The boy stands, limbs hanging. The man takes the quill and begins to write on the boy's chest, copying sharp, angular symbols from the scroll. The child doesn't flinch as the quill digs into his skin, drawing blood as it goes. The wizard finishes with a flourish and barks some uncane command, setting the symbols to glow dully. The boy cries out, knees hanging, hitting the stone hard, his chest burning black and red. Finally, the glow disappears, leaving only um, hard black scale scars exited into his skin. He slumps sideways, twitching, eyes facing the back of his skull. The wizard grunts, kicking him on the leg on his way out. The boy lies on the floor until dawn, eyes still black like holes, the twitch is growing into convulsive shakes. Jesus. see a long empty road cutting through two large crop fields. The air is silent and the land seems too still for early um, afternoon. This woman walks slowly on the road, leading a horse, curiously looking around. She seems to sense something wrong, but is unable to discern what it is. She stops, sniffing at the air, her nose high. Her brow crinkles and she casts about, looking for something. The air is clear, no clouds. She sniffs again, still looking around, confusion clouding her face, mouthing a single word. Fire? She looks out across the fields, her confusion turning to fear. She holds her hand up to block the sun from her eyes and scans the field again. Not finding what she was looking for, she jumps onto her horse's back, the fear quickly becoming panic. She kicks, sending the horse shooting down the path, which bends around some trees to where the farmhouse should be. She pulls up short, horror now in residence on her face as she says at, as she says that burned and charred mess that used to be her family's home. Tears well in her eyes as she kicks again, racing to the rubble. Trauma! I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. Hey there. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Do not air dash close to 10 plus story falls. Yeah, that's not a good idea. That's a very good way to become Consider a street pizza. Yes. There. What did I tell? Rapier, padded armor, and a duelist hat. Ooh. Ooh, not picks. <laughs> well, just use them. This hound stares intently at the covered window, head cocked as if waiting to hear a particular sound. He looks up when you approach and whines a low note, tail wagging slightly. Pet the dog. Dog's tail thumps happily against the floorboards. Ooge. And we can pet the dog.
do grow as it would as it would appear. Hi. What is it you can do? Let's have a wizard spells. Archimedes dazzling lights. Fan of flames. Calicoth's sunless grasp. And Minaletta's minor missiles. I'm also critical fatigue. I think I need to sleep. Sure. Game's not on this area. See if I can buy it. I'm in room then. Greetings. I like room, please. Sounds like you're always welcome. Common room. Yes. Oh. Hi. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with a suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of the Guild of Vale's gallows tree, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face is shriveled inward like mouldering fruit. Her, hat hang her head hangs lengthily to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly, her, hair, her head snaps up and her eyes open. They are empty and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts and with a gust of rancid air, she speaks a word. Watcher. You jolt awake, the foul smelling of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. It fills you with a new queasy apprehension. You feel strong, a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she is truly dead. Oh, look. Alf has a um, level up. Um, oh, you've got two. Okay. Busting wounds. Fetid caress. Infuse the vital essence. So let's gaze. Dark minus mirror image. Necrotic lance. Ooh. Ah. Uh, and we will also take ray of fire. Well, let's go and look at the tree again. I'm gonna laugh if I go back there and it's like, yeah, there was no one, you know, there's no one by that um, description. Never has been. Like, The squat descended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from the thin crooked branch bough that sacks of the tug of her um, noose. The bloated purple flesh on her neck worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen bulges over the rope at the suspenser and her lifeless head lolls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. Why am I getting um, seams of Disco Elysium with this? 
You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surroundings, but there is a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Ow. Yeah, my head. Never. Reach out for the woman. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out towards the, the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new unfamiliar awareness. Once you've expanded enough to reach her, there's a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric, electric surge of images of words and sound. I know, oh, suddenly Disco Elysium. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come have here? Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, uh, it is both, I think. Yes? Are you able to speak to me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. Close the investigation and speaking to Hanging Body. No, no, no connection at all. Suddenly Harry's first dream. Yep. Am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy, even. Do not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I. Wherever here may be. I need to understand something that's happened to me. He nods look of pity on her face as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. She nods. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are, visiting you and I. And it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on. Some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on, and those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. I don't know. My phone says there's no ping. My phone Discord says no ping. My desktop Discord says there is a ping. What the fuck? At least no one's wearing a, a, a horror tie, just a braided one. True. Very true. Let me have a look at this. All right. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! You mean when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. He smiles at you reassuringly, fanning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. 
You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kanua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. I think I supposed to be a watcher. Do you know where that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Call them. Those days are all behind me, no? You said souls break apart over time? Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No. A very small few resist Rimergan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. Say something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Thank you for the hydration reminder. What's that, Amansa? A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are... But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met. Empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other. Turned their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. Who are you? And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. Caldara de Baranzi, of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. What happened to you? She laughs, a rasping choke in cat choke out of space, escaping between rows of buttery yellow teeth, causing her body to bump up and down each spasm. Seeing your blank expansion, she catches herself. <laughs> Oh, come now. Such a question. As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling. Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer. <laughs> wow. Well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife, see why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months, looked high and low for impurities, tested her violence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? I mean... Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm-hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. 
Oh, yes, my Scorching. lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's where they are sour. This is American level sour things. They're not sour. They barely have a tang. Caldaro closes her eyes and her head slumps forward over the noose, and your surroundings seem to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. I was going to crucible of the soul. Are you all right? You seemed lost just now. I'm watcher. Wow, that's interesting. I expect this has something to do with the hooded figure in the ruins, hmm? In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about watchers? Only that they're rare and they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions, <coughs> as you just demonstrated. Let's continue on. Well. Mm-hmm. Crucible of the Soul. The Watcher and Rebels, the vital essence of it, her um, enemies gaining endurance in the process. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Sure. Seventeen and a half. What? What the fuck? Well, what? The smell of pipe smoke at once earthy and sweet winds its way into your nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin, where you find a broad man with straw-coloured hair leaning against a mossy rock wall. His pipe held to his lips with one meaty hand. He looks at you directly in the eye. He looks not aggressive. He regards you with a peculiar smirk. Seventeen and a half. Well, it could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. I'll say thank you very much for the hydration reminder. Sorry? The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I think you oughta. What are you talking about? The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Is that what you people do for fun around here? Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, might as well be nineteen. Don't think I'd put you much higher than twenty-two. Twenty-three tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. What makes you think I was interested in the dwarf woman? It was your moment, his brow arched, his smirk broadens. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack, I took you for a radrick at first. Impossible, I don't drool half as much! <laughs> Do you clearly familiar? Still, you have to forgive my curiosity. Round here, we prefer to turn a blind eye to our, eye to our dead. You know what a watcher is. Careful, friend. Let's not use that word round here. There'd be any number of Radrick bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, animancers, watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here. Radrick especially. They come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. <laughs> Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. N no offense. Nah, none taken. Good, I don't mean it personal when they hang folks here, I have to remind myself. The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. Why was your headman hanged? Got involved. Redrick sent Mount down here the other day. Said they had on good authority someone in the town was working with Kolsk, plotting Redrick's um, overthrow. So if you didn't come forward right then and there, they'd hang every last one of us. No one was coming forward, so Swithin, that's my headman, steps up and says it's him. They took him as his word. Thousand shakes head fixed on the tree. Bound to happen sooner or later, if not plotting against Redrick, then for protecting me. Who's Kolsk? So we've got tied all the hangings. He's on the run now. Probably will be till they catch him. What's your town have against you? Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. Used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That Messerox over there, 
I was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethys. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethys isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethys. He enlisted, then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. After the war, people took to punishing Aethys worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Raedric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. You can see why I was eager to leave. You're not to be hanged. What are you still doing here? Drinking, mostly. <laughs> Boy, if I had one more way out, I just haven't figured out where I'm going yet. Not a whole lot of places out there that don't think Wadewin's like a seaside with Wadewin. We could travel together. Where are you headed? Some, old, some place called um, Cade Noir. There's an old watcher there who might be able to help me. I seem to remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say Watcher with a hush on your breath. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. Don't know why I never thought of it before. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger. And a strange one at that. But truth be told... You might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. That's a fine reason I've ever heard one. All right, then. Guess I'll do some sightseeing. Let's get going. Hey. Hey. What are you? This doesn't answer my question. What are you? We have a fighter. Yeah. All right, then. Oh, well. Oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. He wants me to spin. We need to get back to this game. I do like it so far. I mean, it's made by Obsidian.